So when I was 23 years old, I was um, in California and I got introduced to a technology system. And so when you're from South Texas and then you go to the big city, LA, right? And they talk so big and they talk mm -hmm. huge numbers and, and they have super like fancy like breakfast, lunch and dinner and stuff. And so I was um, always like, I was always um, attracted to like big city vibes, yeah. big deal making kind of like that was just like in my dreams. Right. And so when I get there, um, I get introduced to this technology company and they tell me that they were doing the best next technology that was going to happen. It was going to be a resource for physicians, for chiropractors based on some ACOM standard, some stuff. And um, I was going to be able to invest. I could invest 200,000, 300 or 400,000. And I was going to like can topple my, 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 my investment. And it was going to be even bigger than that because when we would go open to market and then we could sell the software like over a hundred million dollars and all this stuff. And so I was impressed. I was impressed and, and I, and I fell off my chair, right? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And so there's something that I, that I, that, that people suffer called shiny object syndrome, shiny object syndrome. You just, anything that shines, you think it's gold and you go and you run and, and you want to play with it and you want to love it and you want to conquer it and you want to get it done. But then once you go in, you find out that, oh, shit, it's plastic. <laughs> it's shiny. It's shiny plastic. Right. And so what happened with that first deal, I invested 200,000 and then they called me for another 100,000 and they called me for another 100,000. Ended up investing 400,000 in that deal. I was 24 years old and my attorney, she advised me against it. She from day one. From day one. Mm. She advised me against the contract because she said <clears> that the contract was one, very one-sided. But the person involved in the deal was my ex-brother-in-law, right? So I trusted him. And so I was just like, I'm with the right people. I'm going to do my investment. They're going to take care of my investment and we're going to be super successful. So... One year passed, they were trying to build the software, then they couldn't build it here in Boston at this company called um, Clericode. And then we went to do the development in India and they would send me pictures. The doctors would travel to India. And so I kind of felt like, okay, it's getting it's done, going, right? It's yeah. going, it's going, it's going, it's going. And then year three comes and um, they, they, they asked me for more money. And I said, I'm not going to give you guys more money, but if you don't find the money, what's going to happen to the software? Oh, well, we're going to have to cease operations. I said, what do you mean? Everybody has sunken in so much money into this deal, right? Long story short, the following year, uh, my COO at the time found documents where all of those people, my partners, who were all involved in a scam against the state of California, where they had disappeared tens of millions of dollars. Um, and, and they did this huge, huge like circus scam. So I went up and, and I had to end up suing them and um, because they, they misused my fund, my, my monies and it was a fraud. And I couldn't believe my, my ex-brother-in-law would do that. And so come to find out after we subpoena the records, they were using my monies to pay themselves a payroll rather than develop the system and rather than do stuff like that. So according to them, they were paying themselves a payroll because they were performing the job of doing research to develop the software. Anyways, we went to arbitration. The day of arbitration literally in LA was $25,000 a day that we had to pay oh my god twenty five thousand dollars a day i had to fly my 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 good friend um who you know our, our our local attorney to go and testify and anyways that situ that was my first loss in business i was just 24 what years was the old. outcome of that but but when court? i conquered it but when i concluded that 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 chapter in my life i was like 27 already wow yes 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 so I learned so many things from that, from that lesson. I learned that not everything that shines is gold. Mm -hmm. I learned that no matter if it's family, you need to review the contracts and you can't blindly wow. trust. Yeah. I learned that not all titles are important because a title can tell you one thing, but the reality of the actions of the persons will tell you another. I ended up having to pay taxes on the loss because I was suing them in court so even though it was a loss and you're supposed to put it as a loss, right? Because I had been defrauded the money. The, the loss changed three years later. And so then I was deemed for taxes that I had to pay tax, ta uh, taxes, penalties and interest on the money until a judge didn't say, boom, you've lost the money. And so that money that I lost oh for a thousand ended up costing me an additional um, $494,000 worth of taxes because now by the time that they were dinging me on those taxes, it'd been four or five years. 
And so it was horrible. That's that. And Jeez. then uh, the attorney's fees to get this deal done. So that one deal accounted for $1.2 million, cash on cash, dollar on dollar, that loss. So that's been my toughest, toughest lesson in life. Uh, the one that's cost me the most. And then the one that cost me betrayal. 